have to say that Sevi has been my idol since I started playing golf when I was just five years old. And the way that I went to the casting was really funny. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, that? yeah. yeah. <laughs> I went to the casting because one normal day, uh, I went to my golf course that is called Mataleñas, and the secretary of the golf course told me, look, Jose, there is a casting to play the role of Sevi. Why don't you go there and try to be Sevi? <laughs> and I told her, are you kidding me? <laughs> How am I going to be Sevi if I have never been an actor or something like that? Because I was always an extra in the school place, always in the corner of the stage. And um, finally, I went with one of my school, one of my golf friends that is called Raúl, <laughs> and we basically wanted to just have fun. But finally, after one month more or less, I wa I remember that I was at the golf course because I had a tournament, and I received a phone call, and they told me. We want you to play the role of Sevi, and I started screaming around the golf course, and obviously I was very happy. Well, I, I think it was number one is sort of natural genius, which I'd obviously seen on television and most was sort of twice live. But it was funny about uh, his formative years, where he came from, how it was building up against the odds, the ranks to Richard's story. The fact that, you know, I didn't realise, I had no idea whether he was a very clever guy or not. Um, finding out from various people, this guy was a seriously bright guy, number two, um, age 19, when he's second to um, Johnny Villa in the Open. And then at 22, he's speaking on uh, British television, he's got his arms back and he's talking fluently in English. And that was in a space of three years. And this guy was expelled from school at 12, so uh, I quite like uh, if we could have had, at one point I was thinking of having two young Sevies, right? One about sort of uh, 12, 13, the other about 16, 17. And then we, we could take it forward to his build up to when he came second. And it's quite amusing, his first competition, which was at uh, as a professional, was at Barcelona, at San Clemens, right? And what was so good, he became 20th, right? Which for your first competition when you're just 16, playing against the top Spaniards, right? That should be very, very good. But he, he burst into tears and went off in a huff into the, uh, uh, into the clubhouse or the changing rooms. And uh, Manuel Pinero, who won the tournament, walked up and said, well, look, you did bar very well. I don't know why you're crying so much. And he said, but I should have won. I should have won. <laughs> He'd say, he was so, I mean, all the time. I mean, it was it was golf, 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 as I think you can see from, you know, portrayal by uh, Jose Luis, yeah. The, the magic, because all his shots is like he was a wizard, no? With, it, it was magic. <laughs> Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't think anyone would argue that, would they? I, I, but I also think that, you know, he always believed if you could see the ball and swing a club, then the shot was on. And, you know, I think Nick Rav said he played more unbelievable shots than anyone else. But also some of his wildness in later years got him into an un unbelievable position to play the unbelievable shot. If you hit it straight down the middle all the time, then you're not going to hit unbelievable shots. But he used to, you know, whether it was back, I mean, even when he was winning towards the end, his driving, he couldn't go anywhere. I think that obviously everyone who loves golf should go to see the movie in order to know more about Sebi's life. That is one of the legends of this, of this sport. But also, the ones that don't follow golf should see this movie because it's always interesting to know more about the great genius because it gives us like the keys of their success and we can always learn from it. Um, above all, I think it's a really beautiful story for, for the spectator.